woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Um, I am primarily a hand tool user in woodworking. That's that's my claim to fame, and that's what I enjoy doing the most. So if you've come to the store and asked me for a left-handed widget adjuster shank with a half-inch slash 14-degree thing, that's probably why I look at you with a deer in the headlight look. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And there, we have lots of those here in this store. We have lots of little gizmos here. So I'm learning that. Please bear with me. The purpose of uh, today's demonstration is, is to familiarize you with the tools of the trade, okay? Most of these uh, tools, these planes, were made in the 1800s. Um, I've been collecting these for some time. My granddad gave me some of them, and it kind of got me started. And I, I thoroughly enjoy working with hand tools, and I want to get that expanded out into the public. Uh, Woodcraft carries a great variety of the newest generation of Woodcraft hand tools, and they're really good to go. These, these all happen to be Stanley, and I, they say when you start collecting things or acquiring tools, you should concentrate on one specific area. So I, I just concentrated on Stanley. Uh, it seemed to be the most accessible. It seemed available. They're out there. You can find them in, in flea markets and shows, and it's predominantly where I've, where I've picked up a couple extra mine. Um, like I said, my granddad was a woodworker. Um, we're, fr we're from a fall, uh, small town southwest of here, and, and he would, in his day, would make everything that they needed at their house with some of these tools. Um, what is a plane? A plane s simply is a machine that works wood. Okay, why do I say machine? Because it has mechanical parts. And when you think of something with mechanical parts, you gotta think tuning. It's like a car. Okay, I, that's the way I think of it. It's a car, I need to tune it up. Why do I say that? Because there are parts on here that will deteriorate or cut or be used inefficiently if they're not maintained. Okay, so I think of the different types of machines that we have here. We'll start with the, the big one. This is the number eight Stanley. It's for heavy duty work. This one, the number se this is the number eight. The number seven is the joiner. These are the both joiner planes. And this number seven has a corrugated sole. All the, all the uh, Stanley uh, planes, except for the number one, have a model with a corrugated sole. They simply have a C after the number. Okay, eight, seven, this is a number six. This is six is a four plane. Okay, a four plane is uh, kind of a, a, a jump between the smoothers and the um, joiner planes. What are these joiner planes for? L uh, narrow, long surfaces. If you wanna take out a lot of wood, you wanna take out a lot of material fast, Sometimes when I'm using this number eight, it almost runs by itself. So sharp and it's so heavy that it just cruises by itself real nice. Um, I used this, the last time I used this was on um, a deck that I built uh, about two years ago. Okay, joiner planes, eight, seven, and six, four, uh, four plane. And the rest of these, um, the number five, and this is the five and a half, this is the four and a half, four, three, two, and one are also some planes, but they're very small. These are called smoothers, okay? The fives are, are the jack planes, because they're kind of the jack of all trades, but the rest of them are smoothers, okay? Um, the jack plane, like, a, like, a, like the jack of all trades, smoothing, jointing, can do just about anything. Um, not really a great smoother, None of these bigger ones are great smoothers. It's the smaller uh, blades and the smaller planes that are the great uh, smoothing planes. Well, what I mean by smoothing, a plane is for a plane, okay? If you imagine a surface, a wooden surface as a plane, that's what you're doing. You're trying to make it flat. In plane work, sharp and flat are the best methods for use, okay? Flattened sole, extremely sharp blade. With the smaller 
uh, planes, it is easier to get them sharpened and tuned up. And we'll go through that in a minute. But that's, if you've got a nice figural wood, if you've got a nice flat a piece of slab, uh, these are perfect for uh, smoothing those out. And these are what I call, for lack of a, a better term, the specialty planes. Um, this is a number 112 scraper. Again, if you have a, a flat, nice flat surface, maybe you got some glue up, maybe you got some, some tear out on a nice flat surface, this is the thing to use, a scraper plane. Um, this is the 40, uh, 40, and, 40 and a half plane. It's designed to gouge out, hog out a lot of material fast. It's different from the other planes here by the fact that it has a concave um, iron on it, a concave cutter. Uh, I bring this one out only to, to, to uh, acknowledge its existence. This is what's called a bedrock plane. There's a series from 602 to, to a 609. Um, excuse me, 608 um, of bedrock. Now these are differentiated from the normal planes in the fact that they have a uh, better milled uh, frog surface. And I'll, we'll, co we'll cover that uh, here in a minute. But it's more exacting, it fits better. Uh, it has a, a stronger blade, cap liver, and chip breaker. Uh, and these are, these are fairly highly sought after. This one was my granddad's. Um, but you, if you're going to go for the expense, if you're in the ex expense thing, um, probably the, the regular numbered uh, one through eight are going to be less expensive than your bedrock planes. People seem to like them. They're heavier. Um, there's less made of them. And uh, the plow planes or the rabbit planes, the rabbiting planes, these steel ones, these are, these are probably some of the oldest of the planes here. It's for rabbiting. Uh, cleaning out dados, edges. Um, some of them you can, this is the um, 78, it's a fairly common and fairly well replicated uh, plane. It's cleaning out dados, cleaning out uh, edges, rabbits, making that edge nice and smooth, or the surface nice and, nice and smooth for joinery. And it's a real pleasure to work with these. And the smaller ones, these are block planes. The best use for these block planes are for smoothing small surfaces, small areas, and end grain. Okay, keep these nice and sharp. They'll reduce end grain down to a nice smooth surface really quickly. They're easy to work with, they're easy to tune, and they're very handy. Stick one, you know, you see a lot of people, a lot of carpenters just have a pouch and they stick one on the side of their belt. Okay. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the 50 series spoke shaves, okay? I include these because I use it, uh, I use them a lot to, to make square into round, okay? Like a square, a, a block, uh, or a piece of milled wood that's square. These were designed, as the name sounds, for rounding spokes. About, about the time of the Civil War and slightly after that, when people started putting a lot of weight on spokes, bang! This was they, this is the, these are the tools they used, and these are these spoke shaves are some of the oldest um, wood processing tools that are that are made out there, uh, and they go from something like something along these lines, very heavy, very uh, lots of uh, huge shavings to wider wider shavings that coming off some of the heavier, really heavy. Um, spokes and hubs to lighter work. Okay, how does that equate? Well, that machine over there is is a uh, on the far right is a shaper. Okay, this is the shaper of 125 years ago. The same thing. It does works that works that magic on round surfaces. Um, some other uses for these and the smaller ones are more delicate work on spindles. Um, and anything turned, these are good, f good for that small work. Double blades, different bevels available. M turn it around, turn it over, work, work those spokes. And another, another category of plane that we have is the uh, bullnose rabbit plane. This small little 
tool is excellent for cleaning out dados, okay? Cleaning out shoulders, the edges, works beautifully. Anything from, from zero to about a, three quarters of an inch wide, just smooth the bottom of it, smooth the tear out, make the joinery stick a lot, a lot better. And let's see here, along that same line, this is an edge rabbit plane, okay? You're working the bottom with this one, the bottom of the dado or the bottom of the shoulder. If you want to clean up the side of the shoulder, this is what you use. It's got a depth stop and a cutter that'll smooth the side of a dado. Really a nice piece of gear. And last but not least, those of you that use routers, this is the predecessor to the power router, okay? This is a hand router hand plane. It's got, it comes with several different blades. It can hog out material with the best of them, nice sharp blade, and it works, it works great. And there's a couple different varieties of these that I have. This one was my granddad's, and he used it to build all kinds of stuff around the farm. Um, but yeah, this is the, the pre progenitor of the modern day router, and I just love to use it. Okay, um, just for the sake of sake of demonstration the planes as you can see they go from these huge planes like the number eight down to these very tiny uh, planes they um, and they have some of them are made with convex soles some of them are made with um, flattened soles and wide soles but th generally these are called uh, violin type planes violin planes uh, tiny planes people use uh, modeling wood models or other uh, other um, small musical instruments you really uh, get a lot of use out of these tiny ones okay uh, up to this point are, are there any questions anything uh, my number one is at, in a safe at home <laughs> uh, gentleman asked it where was my number one there is a number one um, it's very tiny it, it's tiny it weighs about a pound um, it was made during the time in the 1800s when there were no child labor laws. So what did they, what were they using? Small, small kids, 10, eight, nine, 10 years old, small hands working in wood shops all over the place. That, I choose to believe that instead of something more uh, sinister. But uh, yeah, there, there's a number one plane that's half the size of this guy right here. This is a number two um, and it really, it's not really a woodworking tool. It's more of a, they are expensive. There's a few, very few of them compared to these other ones. They're about a thousand bucks to get a mediocre one. Um, but they're kind of fun. I, I, I just happen to have one that I found a few years ago. Um, it's not really, I don't really consider it a woodworking tool in my, in my shop. It's too small. I can't, I can't even, I can't get my fingers in, inside of it. So I... These, um, some of these, the gentleman asked if where I got these. I, I, I've gotten some of them um, at flea markets and Craigslist and uh, the, mo uh, the most of my, my, what's that? Yard sales. Yeah, yard sales. Uh, uh, my granddad passed these down. My dad never touched them and they just came to me. Um, uh, when I got out of the service, I just, started going to town with it. It was kind of a therapeutic thing for me. Oh, I just happened to find one of these. Thank you, Nick. This is the size of a number one. Gentleman asked where my number one is. I do have a Stanley one like this, but it, it, I, it's, it's hard to use. I suppose if you're working on fine musical instruments, uh, small